What's going on guys? How are you doing? Hope everybody's doing well. I'm here in Goshen waiting for my next load. And I thought I would knock out a couple videos for you guys. Um, I'm still working on the, the second episode for the tow car series. Um, there's a lot of information I'm going on uh, in that video so I want to make sure I cover as much of it as possible. So I thought I would make a uh, different video just to have something up for this Friday um, so probably next week we will do the second part to the tow series so I hope you guys uh, stay tuned and check that out if you haven't already please like comment share subscribe and uh, let's go ahead and grab some water some coffee beer snacks you know whatever you need and let's go ahead and get started Okay guys, so uh, this week we're going to talk about, um, I've had a couple people ask me, Jen, what should I expect when I go to a dealer? What do the dealers expect from me as a driver uh, when I drop off these units? Okay, so I've got some notes right here, so if I look down, I apologize. I just want to make sure I cover as many much of this as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. Probably the most important piece to this entire list is to make sure that you do a very, very thorough pre-trip inspection. So before you pull that unit off the lot, you need to make sure that there is nothing wrong. Okay? You need to check your, you need to check the lights, you need to check the windshield, the top, you need to check the grill. Underneath there's like this little black uh, skirt on the bottom on some of the units. Make sure there's no scuffs or anything on that. Okay, make sure you check the wheels, check the tire pressure, check your uh, lug nuts. Make sure you have a torque wrench in, your, in, in a vehicle that you can uh, leave there once you get started. Check the sides, make sure there's no uh, vinyl coming apart, make sure there's no dents or scratches. And make sure you check different angles too. Okay, don't look at it just straight on. Uh, make sure you kind of like go at an angle from the unit that way you can kind of get like a little glare and you can tend you tend to see uh, scratches better that way okay so make sure you check all of that check the rubber around the windows make sure that they're you know they're not coming undone or they're all together uh, check the door uh, you know again make sure it's not loose it's not rattling make sure it locks okay that's very important again on the bottom there's going to be a skirt usually make sure to check that for scuffs or anything like that when you get to the back make sure you check the again check the windows check the vinyl go at it from different angles make sure that there's no scratches or dents or anything like that this is probably the this is absolutely the most important part to this list because once you drive off that lot you are re, you are essentially responsible for any any damage to that vehicle okay not unless you get into an accident on the way there and they do an investigation but if you show up to the delivery okay you show up to the dealer and there's this giant gash going down the side of the unit you're going to be responsible for it okay and you're going to lose your bond account they're going to use your bond account towards fixing that okay so make sure guys make sure you spend a ton of time on your pre-trips especially if you're brand new uh, just make sure you really thoroughly go through this okay take pictures take pictures from different angles get close-ups okay um, what I like to do is I like to take one wide picture of the entire uh, section that I'm doing so for example when I'm taking it when I'm looking at the front of the vehicle I'll take one with the entire vehicle in it and then I will separate it you know I'll go down and kind of separate it into separate pictures again do the side do the same thing okay go at it from different angles make sure you can show them okay there's nothing here you know that kind of thing if you do find damage do not leave the lot make sure you you contact somebody at the company you work for okay send them the pictures and they will tell you what to do from there uh, if it's very minor usually they'll tell you to to just go 
Um, if it's something more significant, they will probably have to reassign you to a different unit, okay? So number one is your pre-trip. Very important, okay? It, it's taking the, the fault off of you, okay? Um, they will come after you. <laughs> The first person they're going to come after is the driver, okay? It's just, it's the reality of this industry. They will try to put the blame on you. So if you don't take pictures to show that it was already there, uh, you're going to be held responsible, okay? So make sure if there's any damage, make sure that you contact uh, the company you work for. Let them know what's going on. They'll more than likely ask for pictures. Make sure you send them to them. And be patient, okay? Because it can take some time for them to contact the dealer or the manufacturer to find out what exactly they need, to, you know, what the next steps are going to be, okay? So please be patient with them. Don't get all, you know, up in a hoopla, okay? So that's number one. Number two, uh, you have to remember that this is not your motorhome, okay? Uh, it is brand new, typically. These units are brand new, off, fresh off the manufacturer's floor. Okay, and they expect it to be brand new, fresh off the manufacturer's floor when it arrives at the dealer. Okay, uh, some examples of this don't use the bathroom. Okay, don't use, don't try and use the bed or the shower or try to cook anything in there. Don't extend it outwards. Okay, you need to drive the unit. If you're going to sleep in it, don't sleep on the bed. Okay they will know okay it has to be brand new if it's not it's going to come back to you okay so that's probably another big thing they they expect it to be clean they expect it to be fresh okay if you are a smoker uh don't smoke especially don't smoke in these units okay i would even recommend if you can do it to try not to smoke very much while you're while you're driving like even if you're outside the vehicle that odor is going to be on you, okay? Um, it, and it could permeate into the unit that you're driving. So try and keep that in mind. Be mindful of that. Uh, I would smoke first thing when you get out. That way it gives you a few minutes to kind of like air out a little bit, you know? Uh, so that's something to keep in mind if you are a smoker. If you're a vapor, again, don't do it. You, you, there, there's a lot of scents in, in vapes, okay? They don't want it to smell like cherries, guys, okay? There can be no smells, all right? I don't think a lot of people really kind of think about until they have to experience it. Um, but it, it, it is not your motorhome, okay? And you need to make sure that it looks exactly the way that you picked it up as, okay? Uh, what I like to do is the night before I drop the unit is I pack everything into my bags. That way when I get there and they're ready to start, okay? I'm not in there trying to get all my stuff together and you know kind of in their way i just take my bags i take them outside of the unit set them outside and then i stay outside okay i don't interfere i don't try to talk to them or blab at them i let them do their job let them go through and let them do their thing okay next thing look there, there's a big difference I, i've noticed and this is something that i've noticed like uh as a truck driver as well um, when I was when I was driving a truck, I would see guys walk in to a shipper or receiver, and they would be wearing like really baggy sweatpants and like a shirt that was like four day old stains on it, and they were wearing flip flops, and they didn't look like they really like kept up their hygiene or anything like that. Okay, I've seen it, I, I've experienced, and I've witnessed this, and I've noticed that the demeanor of the person behind the counter it's interesting i don't because i don't really think a lot of people uh realize that they do this but you tend to act a different way when somebody looks professional and presentable right uh you kind of think of them a little bit better like your first impression is is more positive uh so you tend to treat them a little bit nicer right um it's the same with this okay then it, so what i do and I know a lot of you probably <laughs> uh, probably don't have to deal with this kind of thing. This is more of like, uh, some of this stuff is more of like uh, lady oriented. Uh, the night before I drop or I, I deliver a unit, I will get a hotel, okay? 
Um, I want to take a shower. I want to do my hair. Uh, I, you know, I want to just be able to relax, get a good night's rest, because I know the following day is going to be a long day between delivery, trying to get to the airport, flying on the plane, and then getting to either, you know, back to Goshen, essentially. Okay, so I know it's going to be a long day. So the day before, I get a hotel. Uh, that's that's really the only time I get a hotel. Um, that way I can just kind of relax and take care of, you know, beauty essentials, you know. Uh, when you, you know, it's, it's important, okay. Take care of yourself. Uh, I don't think a lot of people that are in this industry really take care of themselves the way they should. Okay, there's nothing wrong with getting a hotel uh, the night before, it, you know, to me it's worth it okay it's worth kind of cutting a little bit into the profits I don't see a problem with it everybody's different though okay some guys will just get up extra early go into the truck stop get a shower and they'll do it there you know they'll trim all their stuff and you know everything like that and that's another option as well okay spend extra time making yourself look nice making yourself feel better about yourself Okay, I know that if I haven't showered in a couple days, I feel gross. I, you know, and it, it affects me mentally as well, right? So make sure that when you arrive at the dealers, that you're looking professional, okay? And not only looking professional, but also acting professional. Um, make sure that you are able to handle, <laughs> handle different situations. Some dealers you go to, they're going to be nice. They're going to get you out in 15 minutes. They're going to be very sweet, very loving. You know, they might offer you water. They'll be, they'll be very polite to you. Other dealers are going to be total jerky jerks, okay? Because they have had previous experiences with drivers that were very rude, very inconsiderate. Uh, you know, they did not look professional make sure make sure that you have the right uh mentality i guess make sure that you are able to kind of put your emotions aside and to be able to handle the situation professionally okay because ultimately it's going to get back to the company you're driving for and that could lead to issues with you okay uh there, there could be some issues there some companies require you to dress professionally uh, when you deliver uh, it's kind of a requirement and they the the dealers will report back to that company saying hey you know he came in here in shorts flip-flops and a tank top and his hair doesn't look like it's been brushed in like three weeks you know and that could have a ne negative impact on you okay so um, just food for thought when you were dealing with the more difficult dealer you know continue to be polite okay customer service is like a huge thing in this industry it, it really does go a long way um, don't don't let them walk all over you obviously okay stand your ground but do it so you're not coming off as you know aggressive or uh, kind of combative I guess is a good word for it okay so that's something to keep in mind communication Communication is huge. Uh, make sure that you are communicating with the uh, dealership that you are going to be delivering to. Uh, what I like to do is when I start my trip, uh, right when I pick it up, I will speak with the dealer after I've done my pre-trip, okay? After I've done my pre-trip, I'm all set, I'm ready to go. I will talk to the dealer that I'm going to be delivering to and tell them, you know, hi, my name is Jen. I am with XYZ Company. I have a, uh, a unit here that I'm about to start driving, uh, you know, and give them the information, let them know uh, I'm leaving Thursday morning. I will be there Monday. I could be there Monday morning uh, at the latest or at the earliest. What, you know, and, and talk to them, find out what is going to be best for them. Okay, that goes a long way. You know, I can be there as early as Monday morning. I was calling to see what uh, scheduled appointment time we could create uh, that would work best for you, 
okay? I know, <laughs> I know we all want to think of ourselves, but I guarantee those four words right there will go a long way, okay? Make it convenient for them, okay? Again, don't get walked all over, okay? But make it so it seems like it's going to be convenient for them, okay? Um, so communicate with them. If you're having uh, any delays, for example, with weather, if there was an accident, construction, you know, during the summer, everybody's under construction. So you're gonna see some delays there. Uh, if you have uh, any claims issues, okay, again, make sure that you communicate. Uh, make sure you communicate with them after you've talked to the company. Uh, if they want you to continue on, say, hey, I'm going to be there actually Tuesday is the earliest I could be there, okay? If they give you attitude, don't give in. Don't try and rush to get it there just because they want it there, okay? Uh, this, it, it's all on you guys, okay? Your license, your safety, your reputation, it is all on you, okay? So don't let, don't let these guys try and bully you into pulling, you know, a, a illegal miles or illegal time. Don't let them do that to you, okay? Stay professional, but also let them, you know, inform them, hey, no, that's not gonna work. You know, I have hours of service, I have this or that. You know, make sure that you tread that, that line very carefully, okay? So I will call them when I first uh, pick up the load, and then the, more, uh, the day before, is when I will I will call and speak to them. You know, hey, John, this is Jen from XYZ Company. I just wanna let you know that we are still on time for our appointment time tomorrow at 10 a.m. Anything comes up, I will let you guys know. But so far, it looks like we're gonna be on time. You know, something along those lines, okay? Those are really the two times that I do it. Uh, I don't really call any time after that. Um, I, you know, I just, I, I just don't. Some people will call like about 15 minutes before, um, you know, and that, that's also a good thing to do. There's no right or wrong to that. Uh, it's just not something I personally do. On a side note, um, before, <laughs> on a side note, before you go to the, the dealer that you're going to, okay, what I like to do uh, is about 10, you know, the closest spot that I can pull over and park the RV uh, before I get to the dealer, I go over it one more time, okay? This is very important, guys, because as long as you are out, okay, uh, before you deliver that unit, you have a better chance of it not coming back to you, okay? I go over the unit again to make sure there's no issues, there's no scratches, no dents, no dings, the vinyl hasn't like flown all off. You know, I, I, I double check the unit before I deliver, okay? Um, so that's something to to consider as well. Uh, again, it, it's, it's going to give you a better opportunity for that to come back on you if you call it in before you deliver, right? Because uh, if you deliver, it's, it's just gonna go right to you. They're not gonna really argue with you about it, okay? When you deliver, this is another very important thing, okay? When you deliver, make sure you take pictures of the out, especially the outside. Make sure that you take pictures in the same way that you took pictures for your pre-trip, okay? I've heard stories of guys, they, they took pictures, they would leave, about half an hour later, they would get a call from dispatch, and they're like, hey, what happened? You know, the dealer is claiming that, uh, you know, there's a giant gash going down the side of the unit. You know, what what happened? What did you do? And the, the saving grace of that driver was, I have pictures to confirm that that was not there when I dropped it, okay? And then you can send the pictures, and it, it's gonna it's gonna protect you, right? Again, you, you've got to, pre nobody, nobody is going to save you, okay? You have got to rock solid alibi your entire trip, okay? So make sure that you protect yourself uh, from these companies, all right? Cool. Mileage, let's talk about mileage. So uh, you don't actually get paid for every single mile that you do 
from uh, the lot in Goshen, Indiana to the lot at the dealer. Okay, uh, these companies will pay you zip, uh, usually zip code to zip code or city to city. Uh, it depends on the company you work for. Okay, so they're going to give you a set amount and that's what they're paying you for, right? You do not want to add a lot of extra miles to the units, okay? Unless you're like, have to change your route drastically uh, to in order to get to where you're going, uh, make sure that you call your company first to say, hey, you know, uh, the entire state of Arkansas is closed down on I-40. I need to go back up and around and it's gonna add, you know, extra 500 miles, what should I do? Okay, make sure you, you confirm with the company that that's going to be okay before you just go and do it, okay? Because if you add too many extra miles to that unit that uh, that they have already, you know, this is your average, this is what you're roughly going to be, and here's your payment, um, you could get into a lot of trouble, okay? You could get deleased, uh, there could be a lot of issues with that, okay? So make sure if you have to reroute somewhere, and it's going to be a pretty significant amount, make sure you contact your company first before you do it, okay? Okay, so uh, let's go back to, to the professional part. Uh, what do I wear when I go, uh, when I drop? Um, you don't have to get like a business suit or anything like that, okay? Get a nice pair of dark jeans, get some boots or a nice pair of shoes, uh, usually a polo, like a uh, just a regular polo that you can get at Walmart or something, uh, something like that. I usually wear like a blouse or something, kind of girly. <laughs> I know it's kind of scary. Uh, something a little bit more girly than you know a polo, uh, but you know just look nice. Make sure your hair is done. Make sure your beard's trimmed. Ladies, make sure that you know your hair is looking nice. If you wear makeup, wear some makeup. Try not to wear perfume or cologne. Again, you don't want that smell getting into the the units, okay? So try kind of try your best to stay away from that kind of stuff as much as possible, uh, because that could come back to uh, bite you in the butt, okay? So that's what I usually wear. Um, like I said, they're not expecting you to get you know a three piece tux or you know a, a dress or anything like that. Um, but you know, just just look presentable. They look nice. Make sure you know you're nice and trimmed up, and you got you know your hair looks decent, and you know that kind of thing. Okay. Um, the customer service side, just be polite, guys. I, I know it's hard sometimes. Some of these guys are just total jerks. Okay. I have found that the women that <laughs> that I deliver to. Um, they're actually worse to me. Uh, I don't know if it's because I'm female, I don't know, uh, but I usually have a harder time with women uh, that I deliver to compared to the guys. Uh, guys are usually, seem to be a little bit calmer. Try, try your best to just be, you know, just let it go. You know, it, it's not worth it. It's not worth uh, your reputation or anything like that, okay? Uh, don't get walked all over. But, you know, if they're kind of coming off as an attitude, uh, there's probably a reason for that. They've probably had some really crappy drivers come in that, you know, come in all huffed puffed and think they're cool. And I've been here, you know, 15 minutes. Why am I, why am I still here kind of thing? Okay. Um, what you can expect from dealers. Okay. We're going to kind of reverse it a little bit. Uh, well, <laughs> It's gonna vary. Uh, you could be there 15 minutes and they could just, you know, sign the paperwork and you could leave. You could be there two to three hours and they go over it like a fine tooth comb, okay? Um, so make sure that when you're planning your trip back to Goshen, you know, if you're flying back, if you don't have a tow car, uh, it, there's no backhauls or anything, make sure that you give yourself plenty of time, okay? Um, I have found that uh, if I can politely somehow uh, bring it into the conversation that, hey, you know, I do have a flight to catch. I'm not trying to be a jerk. Uh, do you think that maybe we could, you know, a little bit quicker, you know, don't, don't, you know, and you, you can talk to them about it, you know, just be like, I'm not trying to be rude. I know we all have a job to do here. You know, I, I do have a flight that's, you know, make a little bit earlier. 
I've done that before. My flight's at noon <laughs> and it's already 10. Like, can we kind of, you know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or rude, but, you know, could we possibly, uh, you know, move it along a little bit quicker, you know? So, um, I've done that before because they were just, I was there for like three hours. Okay. So, um, but usually they're pretty they're pretty cognizant of you not having a tow car and they probably realize that you know i i tend to bring it into a conversation with the guy that's that's checking me out, uh, checking me in or checking me out rather um like yeah you know this has been great uh, i get to fly back this afternoon you know that kind of thing i gotta find you know ask them hey is uber available you know just kind of nonchalantly bring it into the conversation <laughs> And they'll be like, oh, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and get you out of here so you don't miss your flight. You know, there's kind of a psychology behind this sometimes. You know, it's customer service. Is, it's all mind game. Okay, so um, don't... My, my point to all of that is just because one, one dealer had took you 50... It only took you 15 minutes, you're not going to get that every time. Okay, uh, just be patient. All right. You treat them with respect, and hopefully they will return the favor. Uh, even if they don't, continue to be respectful, be polite, okay? And if, if it gets bad, you know, if it gets to a point that it's just making you uncomfortable, be like, hey man, you know, no disrespect, but can I get somebody else over here to, like, uh, do this? Because I, I'm not feeling comfortable with, with you doing this, okay? Because if you piss these guys off, all right, uh, regardless if they deserve it or not, um, they're they're probably gonna find something right uh, that's usually how that works they're gonna ding you just to get back at you or they're gonna take even longer just to frustrate you more okay so don't give them that one up all right don't give them that that advantage to, to you okay um, so that's pretty much it I plug my phone in phone's dying hurting There we go. All right, so that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, like I said, I've had a couple of people ask me, like, you know, what do, how does this work? Like, how are people when you deliver? Are they nice? Are they mean? Are they rude? Uh, what should I look like? You know, should I dress up? Should I just go casual? Some of the things I should do in order to have a successful uh, uh, delivery. Okay. Um, this is a pretty decent list. It's not, you know, no all say all there's, if you guys have any additional ideas or tips and tricks for, for drive away drivers, leave them down below. And, uh, so that way we can continue to kind of, you know, help each other out in this aspect. So guys, that's, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are all doing well. I uh, hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. I am feeling better. <laughs> uh, still a little sniffly, but uh, nothing like I was before. So uh, just wanted to crank out this video real quick. Like I said, that tow vehicle, um, that tow vehicle video is kind of taking more time than what I thought it would. Uh, so that's going to be the following week. It's going to be next week. So anyways, thank you guys. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for liking and commenting and subscribing. And uh, you guys are awesome. You do YouTube very, very well. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Anyways, thanks guys. I will see you next episode.